Today on SAU News, it's voting season. What are the habits of those voting on campus? A new $15 million building is coming to Southern. Did you know that? These stories and more coming up. SAU News starts now. Welcome to SAU News. I'm Matthew Taylor. I'm Alexis Dewey. Our weekly newscast is brought to you by SJC Productions in the School of Journalism and Communication. Did you vote in this year's midterm elections? A recent Instagram poll shows that two-thirds of Southern students over 18 do not know how to vote. A campus group called the Society of Pre-Law launched a Southern Votes initiative to educate students about the voting process. They set up a booth on the promenade with QR codes directing voters to the official voter registration website. They also helped students request their absentee ballots for those registered in their home states for the midterm elections. According to Southern Votes Coordinator Amy Arsdell, voting is an important step to help create the future that our generation would want to live in. Although voting is not required, it is a right given to all eligible citizens of our country. The booth also gave away free snow cones and stickers. High on the hill that overlooks the Hol Holsey Wellness Center, there's a new structure rising to the skies. It's the new home of a church close to the heart of the campus. Amelia Zimmerman has this update. Inspiring music and delicious food. I think my favorite food was uh, the mini arepas. They were so, so good. We're a part of the fundraising dinner held for the College Dell Spanish American SDA Church, Sucasa, on October 23rd. Sucasa plays a huge role in the lives of Southern students. This church is very dear to me. Uh, actually, it's one of the first churches I came uh, when I started here at Southern. Knowing Spanish is optional. I have really enjoyed going there and learning Spanish, and so it's helped me practice my Spanish. Currently located on Colker Drive, Sucasa Church has been in need of a new facility for several years. Because um, we actually have two services because we cannot feed everybody in only one service. The groundbreaking ceremony for the new church was held in October of 2020. But due to COVID-19 and supply chain issues, progress has been delayed and the church is in need of approximately $2.5 million to continue. Just a year ago, this entire structure was not in existence. The big question that remains now is, when will Sukasa open its doors? I'm praying hard that this is going to be done in one year. According to Pastor Feliciano, the frame of the building is nearly complete. The rest is going to be a little bit easier because it's going to be inside. As excitement builds for the new church on College Drive, Sukasa recognizes God's work. This belongs to God, so if we have a need, it's an opportunity for God to do another miracle. For SAU News, I'm Amelia Zimmerman. Church members gather in person and online for prayer at 8 each weekday morning to pray for Sukasa Church. After years in Brock Hall, Southern School of Business is excited to relocate into its own new building. Current mock-up designs show a four-story building with around 40,000 square feet. The estimated construction budget? $15 million. The proposed location is in front of Maplewood Hall, just behind Southern's digital sign. The new building will give the School of Business more room to grow as they are one of the biggest majors on campus. It also will give the remaining departments on Brock's third floor, like the English, History, and Political Studies departments, more room. The goal is to have this new building ready by July of 2025. In the fall of 2023, Southern will launch a brand new bachelor's degree in engineering. Director of Admissions Ryan Herman said that the program prospective students have been asking for. In the past, Southern has only offered up to an associate's degree in engineering. Current students would be able to stay at Southern and complete their degree with the options of focusing on mechanical, electrical, or computer engineering. However, the Southern Accent reports this change will require more labs, classrooms, and offices. According to Facilities Manager Marty Hamilton, the Engineering Department will move into a vacant space in Linwood Hall. The University's historical items currently on display in Linwood will be moved into storage. Students will tell you that the Men's Residence Hall gym has newer and better equipment compared to the Women's Residence, Thatcher Hall. 
SAU News interviewed some different people to investigate. According to men's residence assistant Kenneth Salmon, there can be anywhere from 15 to 30 men in the Talge gym at once. Contrastingly, there are only two to three women using the Thatcher gym at a time, if any at all. The men's gym is also located in one big room, while the Thatcher gym is spread out over two smaller rooms. Additionally, the men's gym has more equipment, including two full racks of dumbbells. The women's gym has one rack with several missing sets of weights. Although we are unsure of the last time the Talos gym was renovated, the Thatcher cardio room was renovated within the last two to three years. Thatcher deans have plans to repaint and re-carpet the Thatcher gym in the future. Stay tuned to SAU News for more coverage on this story. Recent safety alerts on campus may have you thinking about better ways to stay safe. Reporter Lauren Daniels shows us how Campus Safety is offering students a self-defense workshop to increase your personal security. Many students are unaware that Campus Safety provides a self-defense class called RAD. It stands for Rape, Aggression, and Defense. Campus Safety offers the training here in a specially equipped room located in the back of the building. So we do a women's and a men's class. The women's class is attended more heavily. Uh, the men's class is called Resisting Aggression with Defense, also RAD. Uh, the program is geared a little differently for the men. Uh, generally, we have one men's class a year and then about four women's classes a year, depending on need. Lieutenant Fraker is joined by his wife, Jessie, who also is a RAD instructor. So when we take the class, or when he teaches the class, we want to make sure people come. They have to come in day one, day two, day three, day four. They can't just pop in anytime they want. Training programs meet twice a week for two weeks. The three-hour training sessions are offered in the evenings, making it easier for students to attend. After learning the basics, students get to put on protective gear to practice safety techniques. Jesse instructed me on how to get into a defensive strike pose and say the word, No! Good. While safety is a huge takeaway that one can get when taking these RAD classes, there's also other takeaways one can get as well. So we want to use this time with the girls to help them to understand that God is their source of strength. He is their source of power. Um, and we love to use 2 Timothy where it says that, um, God is not the God of chaos or anything of like that. He's, he's given us power and love and self-discipline or self-control. After completing RAD training, students are awarded an exclusive lifetime return in practice policy where they can join other RAD classes wherever, whenever, at no cost. For SAU News, I'm Lauren Daniels. Stay safe. Thank you, Lauren. Like everything else, the cost of getting a good haircut is going up. But residents in Talage Hall have an inexpensive alternative. Look no further than the Talj Hall Barbershop. In a small room located on the first floor of Talj Hall, Talj residents can receive a haircut in a professional setting. The shop, as it is called, is a space where students can use their haircutting skills to earn extra income. So when I uh, visited Southern for the first time, I was told that they had a barbershop and I'd been cutting hair in high school, so it was definitely something I wanted to consider. Stefan is one of the five self-trained barbers who operate in the shop. In addition to using his talents as a source of income, he also feels like he is able to serve his male colleagues. It's, it's my job and, and we get paid pretty well and we also get to provide very good services for the southern kids here. So they don't have to spend gas money, go to southern Chattanooga and pay 50 bucks for a cut. So just making sure everybody can afford it. The shop has professional barber chairs and tools that give clients a similar experience to one that they would have at a licensed barbershop. Since not all guys here in the dorm own cars, there are many who are grateful for this service. I really like how the school has implemented this barbershop for people who, you know, maybe want a cheaper cut for, you know, good quality. So, you know, I feel like it's a really a good barbershop. With SAU News, I'm Laron Matheson. Haircuts range in price from $15 to $25. You can find the shop on the second floor of the men's residence hall. This year's Student Association Fall Festival was postponed one week due to weather. And rain was still in the forecast for Saturday night. But as Valeria Isagire reports, the rain never came and the event went off without a hitch. Fall Festival is a popular event at Southern Aventis University. Students gather together to enjoy a wide range of activities, from car shows to karaoke. Once again, this year, clubs on campus were encouraged to have a booth and, in that way, raise awareness and funds. So we've got about 
basketball pong booth um, and you just throw some basketballs in, see how many entries you can get into a giveaway um, for a gift card. And this is for our tomorrowpreneurs group with Enactus. Um, and we just work with inner city kids to teach them different business concepts and life skills um, in the hopes of giving them a brighter future. As students, we're also able to vote for their favorite cards through a QR code and enjoy one of the crowd's favorite, the hair ray. A hair ray is a classic here at the fall festival. And what better way than do it with your friends? The vibe of Fall Fest is energetic, it's community, it's fun. Everyone can come out and support clubs with playing fun games like axe throwing, taking pictures. An atmosphere full of fun and excitement was sensed in the 22 edition of the Fall Festival. For SAU News, Valeria Izaguirre. Next semester's essay events include a second 423 night and the end of the year multimedia show we call Strawberry Festival. SAU News is a student-run production here in Southern School of Journalism and Communication. I'm Matthew Taylor. I'm Alexis Dewey. Thank you so much for following along with us here this semester. See you next year. Thanks for watching.